Good afternoon, gentlemen. So we spent two lessons on expanding. We are going to do factorizing today. Factorizing and expanding are opposites of each other. So if you have uh, something in expanded form, you factorize it, and then you can, if you then expand your answer, you should get back your original. So let's actually see how that works. So the first thing you do for any factorizing question, so you'll actually do a lot of factorizing questions. Today we're doing two terms. Uh, next lesson we'll be doing three terms. It does not matter what kind of a factorizing question is. Whenever you see the word factorize, the first thing you should do is look for a common factor. So what's the first step for any factorizing question? Look for a common factor. What's the first step for any factorizing question? Does that matter which type of factorizing it is? It could be next year in year 10, year 11, year 12. Uh, does not matter. Whenever you are asked to factorize something, you always look for a common factor. Are we all happy with that? Yes. Now, what's a common factor? So what's factors? What are the factors of number 2? So numbers that 2 is divisible by? Yes. So is 1 a factor? Yes. Is 2 a factor of 2? Yes. yes. What are the factors of 6? 1, 2, 3, and 6. So numbers that divide into 3 without leaving a remainder are factors of 3. Numbers that divide into 6 without leaving a remainder are factors of 6 and so on. So now we know what factors are? Yes. yes. Alright, now, how we factorize, when we expand something, we're moving things inside the bracket. What did we do? Did we multiply? Yeah, when we move something in, so for example, we have this. When I had to take 2 inside the bracket, what was I doing? Wasn't I multiplying 2 times x? Yes. Yeah. So I got 2 times x and then 2 times 4 which is? 8. eight. eight. Positive 8. Now we're doing opposite. So what's opposite of multiplying? Dividing. Dividing. So we need to divide all the things in the bracket by the same number. Here we were multiplying something with the bracket. Won't we multiply all terms with the same number? Now we have to divide all the terms with the same number. Is that clear? So that number has to be the common factor, the highest common factor of all the terms. So how many terms are there? Two. Are there any letters as well? Yes. yes. So we deal with numbers first. Screens down now. Thank you. So 7 and 28. What is the highest common factor of 7 and 28? How do we find the highest common factor? What are the factors of 7? 1 and 7. What are the factors of 28? 7 and 4. 1, 4, 2, 14, 28. So what's the first number, that, what's the highest factor that's common to both 7 and 28? 7. Do we all agree with that? Yes. Now, so that means out of the letters and numbers, 7 is common to both of them. Now, there's a letter as well, A, but is that letter common to them? No. So can I divide 28 by A? No. no. So if it's not common to every single term, we can't take it out. So have we established 7 is the only thing that's common? Yes. So that comes out of the bracket. Now, inside the bracket, everything gets divided by 7. Because we're moving 7 factor out of the bracket, we're dividing. Remember here we multiplied every single term because we were moving inside the bracket. Now when we're taking stuff outside the bracket, what do we do? Divide. So what's 7 divided by 7? One. 1. So you're left with 1, but you also had an A. 1A. Does it look pretty? No. No. Eight. Better? Yes. Then, plus 28 divided by 7. 4. That's it. You factorized it. Pens down. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we have decided what our common factor was, and we took that out, and then divided every single term by that factor. Not difficult at all, is it? No. Let's do the next one. 3 and 5. What's the highest common factor of 3 and 5? 3. 3 and 15, sorry. What's the highest common factor? 3. 3. Are there any letters that are common to both? No. No. So we happy with only 3 being outside the bracket? Yes. So 3F divided by 3. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And F was there. For the last time, shut down your screens, please. Thank you. So 3 divided by 3 is 1. And we had F. We haven't taken F out, so F remains. Then negative 15 divided by 3. So we know it's going to be negative. 
What's 15 divided by 3? 5. 5. That's it. And we can see that if we expand it, what will I get? 3f minus 15. We'll get our original answer. So expanding and factorizing are opposite of each other. This one has numbers and letters that are common. Common, 4 and 22. What's the highest factor that's common? 2. We all agree with that? Yes. All right, now, this one is k squared. Or well, how many k's does it have? 2. This one has 1k. How many k's are common? One. one. So can I take k to the power of 1 out? Yes. Yes. Make sense? Yes. Then, 4 divided by 2? Two? 2. 2. You have k squared. So k squared divided by k is k. Or how I teach with the simpler method is how many k's are there? 2. How many do you take out? 1. How many remain? 1. So k to the power of 1. In fact, we're dividing, but it's it just makes most uh, it's easier for students to write it that way. Then minus minus twenty two divided by two. Twenty two divided by two. So you had one k, you've taken it out. Nothing remains. Make sense? All right, eyes on board. Next one, three and six. What's the common factor? Now this one is p q. This one only has P. Which letter is common to both terms? P. So are we happy? 3P is the highest common factor? Yes. 3 divided by 3? 1. one. You've taken the P out. What remains? Q. Q. Plus 6 divided by 3? Q. Plus 2. You've put, taken the P out. Does not look pretty. Yeah. Now it does. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. Because the P has been taken out. P divided by P is 1. And there was only 1 P. Yes? Now, this whole factor is common to both, isn't it? So now we have a common factor that's binomial. That means it has two terms in it. So can we see the whole X plus 3 bracket is common to both of them? Yes. You can take the whole bracket out. So, can I take x plus 3 out? Yes, I can. Then, from the first term, it was y times x plus 3. You've taken the x plus 3 out. So if you divide, what remains? Y. 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 Then, you've taken the x plus 3 out. What remains? Mm -hmm. Plus 7. Make sense? Next one. What's the common term? Two take away it? So can I take the binomial factor out? Yes. So if you divide this by 2 minus m, what will be remaining? 4k. 4K. So if you divide this term by 2 minus m, what will be remaining? 5. five. Not 5. Minus 5. Minus five. Minus five. Exactly. And that's it. That's simple factorization by taking a common factor out, highest common factor, which could be a binomial. That means two terms. Any questions? No. Okay, get on with your work.